I guess I get it. Um, you know, we don't want immigrants to come over here. Um, I shouldn't say we don't want immigrants, but most of us don't want an influx of immigrants coming over here because we're afraid of the bad apples that come over. Because let's be honest, with the influx of immigrants coming over, we're gonna get some negative people. Even though the majority of the people are just families struggling to get out of their situation, there are gonna be some bad apples. But let us not forget, we were all immigrants at some point, at least most of us. Even, if, even some of us with Native American blood, we have blood from people from other places. I'm part Native American, very diluted, but uh, there's some Native American blood, there's some African blood, and believe it or not, there's some white ancestral blood. So we all were immigrants at some point, but it's crazy to me how Immigrants come over here, and I'll give you an example. This was all the way back in um, 98. Some of you weren't even alive then. Some of you that probably watching me probably were just born in 98. I know it sounds crazy to me too, but it was a Haitian guy. He came over here and he screwed up his credit. But Immigrants came over here and there was a, a large issue with issuing them social security numbers and he didn't have to go out and get a CPA because he was an immigrant. He simply, because these immigrants usually got three to four names and they were allowed to take either their father's surname or their mother's. He just applied for a brand new social security after screwing up the first one in his father's name as opposed to his mother's name got a whole new social security issue this is not a CPA this is a legitimate from the government this was years ago you know things were different got a legally issued new social security number totally separate from the first one built his credit up and now, I wouldn't even be surprised he's very wealthy. I know he uh, was able to go out and he was creating money. You know, so the catch is you gotta have a business. He did have a business. He was basically buying phones, which was very easy at the time, back in 98. Nokia was popular. He was able to buy phones and sell them overseas and make a good profit. That's why I met him. I, at the time, I owned a small cell phone store, struggling cell phone store, and he was coming to me, seeing if I could get the phones at a cost and still made a profit. When I explained to him, as a dealer, it wasn't possible to sell phones to him cheap and still made a profit, he found other sources that he was able to do this, and he made a fortune. And I wouldn't even be surprised right now if he's, he's bare minimum middle class right now. You know, I'm pretty sure he's probably somewhere in Connecticut living it up. He, I think he bought a, a modest house, not a mansion, but it was a reasonably sized house at the time. Back then, if you bought a house that was even a decent size back then, you got to remember with inflation, he's looking at bare minimum the house is going to be worth like a half a million dollars. If you had a three-family house back then, it was a reasonable size. So, and it does depend on what town you purchased in and stuff like that. And if I'm not mistaken, he was in a wealthy environment. But that goes to show you, immigrants are able to come over here, hustle, out hustle Americans, make money, become successful. There's countless stories like this. There's immigrants where I saw a Spanish family, they must have it felt like moved in like at least 
20 people into one apartment. They all had jobs. They all saved their money. They worked together. And they were able to put their money together into it. They started their own business. I think it was a landscaping business. And they were able to all buy a house. A few of them had good credit because they worked together. Black people in particular, this is a hard concept. And I had a mentor, what I thought was a mentor, that I contacted through Instagram. Come to find out he knew less than me. This, this is the reality of the internet. Sometimes you will meet people that know less than you trying to school you. I mean, it happens. I wouldn't even be surprised that I've schooled people that know more than me on a college level, but not on the business side. My landlord, another perfect example. Somebody that was smarter than me, book smarter than me probably. Well, I wouldn't say that, but she, she was immigrant. say she probably was born here but her family were immigrants obviously from uh, I believe China she was so immersed in being wealthy that she forgot she was an immigrant as far as the United States classifies her so even if you were born here but you are of immigrant descent there's certain grants you qualify for. So I go to tell her, this is my old landlord, by the way, she's no longer my landlord. So I go to tell her, Ms. Hong, you know there's certain grants you could get just for being Asian and a, a minority. She's like, I'm not a minority, I'm American. I was like, I understand that, but you're not white, you're still a, a minority. And the look on her face, she was actually shocked at this news that even though she was wealthier than me, she would qualify for certain grants and money and because she was so cheap and didn't want to pay me for none of this information I could have gave her, I didn't give her any more details, you know, because she wants to charge me rent on the first but don't want to give me a consulting fee, you know you got to meet people like that but I, once I explain to her, you're an immigrant and, you know, there's money you qualify for. Because I just happened to see a grant for uh, Asian Americans. And you guys got to start working together to get ahead. That's the problem. And I get it with black people. I really do. Because it only takes one in the group to sway your trust in all your people. Unfortunately. And I've got burned not once, not twice, but by two black entrepreneurs that I met on the internet. So I get it. I no longer try to convince people to only buy black because of that fact. I'm saying you need to partner with people. Doesn't matter their race. If you got to partner with a woman, so you guys can capitalize and get that woman grant or that Asian American grant or that Latino grant. You need to build a company strictly to start partnering with these people. You can offer to set them up, their corporation, and take a small percentage, take 10%. Be like, look, if I help you navigate on how to build your own business and receive this money can I, my company receive 10% ownership in your company almost nobody will say no you're offering to do the work help them set up help them find and apply for these grants and if you got any of them that have a, a, a minimum 680 credit score, you might as well say you win. Because that alone will give you the ability to help them get set up. And what you do is you tell them 
funding, you pay me a fee, a small fee. Plus I own 10% in your business. And you write up an agreement, write up a legal contract. Once they receive a certain amount of funding for you to receive what you're asking for. And that could be $500, $1,000, even $2,000. You can make that in the payments or you can make that one lump sum depending on how much you're getting. And I happen to know for a fact, I could get any entrepreneur with a 680 credit score and they have a steady income of at least 30000 I'll say at least 30000 and I can get them 50k right out the gate when they set up their business and go open up their first bank account. Possibly even, I would say 50 to 150. Just based on their personal score being 680. Now you go around, you part, you have your, your company, your bank or your LLC partner where you acquire 10% of each one of these businesses. Show them how to get set up, how to make the money. And you're on your way to a successful business that helps other people start business. It could be a template business. I can even give you an example. Like I'm in the transportation industry. I'm thinking about setting up my own transportation um, company separate from Uber and Lyft um, and still provide the same transportation. I still can set it up where it does Uber and Lyft, but I may want to do courier, I may want to do uh, shipping. Set your people up where they can do a transportation company. And you set them up where they apply for, uh, they set up internet income system that's going to show them how to market their business then you show them what fintech bank account to set up with that I just happen to have rare pro link for so you really don't have to charge them anything because you're going to make it back in referrals and you're going to make it back because you own 10% of the company but I would still charge at least Five hundred to a thousand once they receive their credit. Why not? They're doing all the work. They're showing them step by step how they can do this template business. Once they get their credit, let's say they off the gate, they get fifty to hundred thousand dollars. You go down, you show them immediately how to purchase their car under their LLC. And then they could partner with you to say, say they don't want to pay for the insurances and the licenses. You could be like, look, I'll insure and, and license your car under my company, even though they still own it. I'll insure and license it under my company for not even nothing because you already own 10%. But you could be like, yeah, you got to give me, say, $100 a day to cover the insurance and everything on the car. And they, meanwhile, they can easily make, once you give them the apps and the strategy on how they're gonna make money, they can easily make $300 a day. They're only paying you 100 for access to your fleet account or your licenses. You can easily add them to your Uber fleet and the car can still be in their name. They can collect the funds, however you guys want to work it. They don't have to be on your fleet. They can just be paying you for the use and access to your, their car being on your insurance. There's just a lot of possibilities and ways you can partner with people build your business up by still helping entrepreneurs. Like one of the things I'm gonna do, or I'm already doing, is offering free marketing for any entrepreneur. And the reason why I'm able to do that 
is because I know I'm going to get them on the back end. I know they're going to need me for something later, so why not offer them free marketing and advertising? And it gives me more content for channels in the future. Possibly my own platform that I'm working on. I'm giving you guys a lot of different ways you can work this. But it all stems from you got to partner with people. There's ways you could get LLCs set up and you have bad credit, but you could bring in your girlfriend, your brother, your partner as your credit partner to help you establish the credit, then go out and purchase your vehicles to make the money. I didn't do this in the beginning because I wasn't thinking about transportation. It wasn't until my old company started running out of money company side business was almost down to, I think I was down to my, my last five grand and I realized you know what I can go drive for Uber it hit me like a ton of bricks I was like yo I got I can sign up and drive for Uber and this was you know years ago this was like 2017 ish and they were paying a little bit better and um, it was too little, too late. I still, because uh, everybody was struggling, nobody wanted to help me out. We lost a particular home. We didn't own it, but we were renting a house and everybody went their separate ways. This was right after my grandmother died. And uh, it, was, it was a troubling time, but I've came out of that and realized that it wasn't that, because me and my family try to work together. It's just sometimes your family isn't the right family to work together. It's just that simple. I've worked with strangers and had a better outcome than working with my own family. And I realize it's unfortunate and me and my brother had a business and we just could not work together and figure a way how to construct a profitable business and you're going to have failures it's just unfortunately um, it, it puts a strain on family you know I mean I've had failed businesses with, with people that were friends and acquaintances and it's not the same thing as with family because you really feel bad that you no longer will probably even see that family member, much less work with them ever again. You know, and it's caused a strain on me and my brother's personal relationship. But things happen. You're never too old to start over. But you got to find the right people to work with because you're not going to get rich alone. I hate to break it to you guys. You could have a six-figure business. I believe you could have a well-structured six-figure business and that probably could make you a quarter million dollars. It is possible. And live, and live and run it totally alone. But you could probably take that same business and turn it into a million-dollar business by simply working with the right three people. So, anything is possible. I'm gonna try to find the right four people to construct the perfect corporation to either take public or sell in the next three years and I don't need to really prove it to you guys because it's going to be documented because it's going to be on video it's going to give me more content to show to you guys and I will show proof you know I've shown proof on this channel I don't have a problem with that um, when I got my EIDL money when I got my PPP I showed you guys I don't have an issue with showing you when I get the stuff, because I every now and then I don't want to come off as bragging though, because 
course, a lot of people accuse Glenda Cameron of like bragging. And I don't ever want to get to that point where you guys consider me bragging. So I want to like humbly show you guys the progress as I'm making it, as we go along this journey. And I don't ever think I would buy a Porsche. So I don't think I'm going to be flashing any high-end cars. But I may get a car that's, you know, I can see myself in like a Mercedes truck or a BMW, something to that effect. I can even see myself in his uh, Glendon Cameron at X5 at one time. I can see me in X5, but I don't see myself in a Porsche. I probably would never go that high end, even if I had money, even if I had his money. But I do see myself like buying that X5 he had. You know, particularly I see myself buying a used X5 because I, what I found out about purchasing used cars, it gives the same effect when it's a quality, you know, standard car or considered luxury car. If you get a used one, it's going to give people the same effect. If you get a used X5 as opposed to a brand new X5, people are going to still look at you like you're still a boss. So, and it makes more sense for a transportation company to purchase used vehicles. In all honesty, it doesn't make any sense to buy a new vehicle unless that particular new vehicle will be for yourself. Like, I can see myself purchasing a brand new vehicle for myself and adding it to my fleet just to be adding it, but, you know, doesn't really... Look at this truck. Say 
acquisitions company and it just acquires real estate companies and it could be another it could be another holding company where it has LLCs under it that actually hold the properties or businesses but it becomes the master company and you only have the five of you as investors and the reason why I say five is you always want to have an odd number when you're making corporate decisions and I can even set it up where I can put a clause in there where I cannot be voted out as, say, CEO. Say, I'm the CEO. I cannot be voted out as CEO. And in the event of my death, my shares of the company goes to my trust, my living trust. And I, while I'm alive, I can pick the next CEO to replace me. In the event of my death, the board will decide who becomes the next CEO, but say my shares and control can go to my trust. And um, my daughter going to receive the benefit I trust could be have active power of control. I can put all that in the clause. <coughs> active power to control my shares, I should say. To have voting rights on my behalf in the event of my death. You can have all this in play, you know, I've got two big law firms I can work with. It's just going to cost money. You know? And that's why I say you wait till after you build these people up. You show them how to get their, self, uh, their the LLC set up. You show them how to get uh, low risk NICS codes. You know? Four people. You could build another super company after they're all bringing in revenue. And the way you guarantee revenue is you have them purchase vehicles, and your transportation company could, could actually put drivers in those cars and make sure they have revenue. So you can have your hands in everything and still kind of control the destiny of not only their companies, but the future company that you take public or yourself. Now, they're, they're, they're individual corporations. I don't recommend they sell those. And they're more, more than likely going to be S-Corps at some point. Or not, depending on which the way they want to structure their business. But a lot of times, their pers individual personal businesses may be S-Corps. And then uh, this company will definitely be a C-Corp, a traditional C-Corp. The one you build together that you go sell because those are the type of businesses people look to buy. They usually want them to be C-Corps. They usually want them to be incorporated. They usually want to have a good officer structure a purpose. And the purpose could be my event space idea. You literally can start a new corporation that's going to be the event space. All the members could be active. They're going to be active members, meaning that even us as business owners, we got to supply a membership fee to help that company grow. So we got to invest, say, $97 a month to save for the membership to be a part of that company. And everybody has to be a member to use the space for events. But like I said, if you're making sure each one of these partners has active income coming in, they're more likely to do business with you again and again and again because you've shown them proof. And you help them build this. So 
So why wouldn't they help you start a whole nother company? And it's only gonna make them money down the line. And what you guys do with that new company is, you don't take anything out of the company for as long as possible because you want that company to be have funds to one you don't want to you don't want to pay payroll on that company and two you want that company to have to build assets you want that company to start buying assets you know and by the company owning assets later you guys could say okay now we can take a small salary say a year or two down the line so it is kind of like an investment strategy that's the way I look at it but you gotta find the right four people and nine out of ten those people might not be they might not be your family if that makes sense so that's all I got for you guys today Thank you for your time, subscribe, like, comment, and I'm going to see you guys in the next one.